Well, democratizing finance means making our financial institutions first broader in their coverage, covering more people. Second, covering the kind of risks that concern people. Uh, third, uh, getting people more involved in, uh, in financial decisions with help from advisors and with proper information. All, all, all those things that will help people manage their risks better and take advantage of opportunities better. I think financial education is important and it's not well um, done yet. And, uh, so schools need to have a financial education sequence in it. But on top of that, I think that we can't educate everybody uh, adequately about finance. It's like medicine. You can't deal with medical problems by asking people to learn medicine. They need a physician who will uh, tell them what's wrong with them and, and give them very clear instructions. The same thing is true with finance. I think we need uh, expanding the f personal financial advisors so that more people have, really so that everyone has them. There's a natural role, there's a natural role for the government and a natural role for private sector. There's also a natural role for nonprofits and nonprofit-like organizations. We've experimented through history about which kind of activity goes well in which kind of role. And there have been differences across countries. For example, when railroads were developed in the 19th century, in Europe they made them government projects. In the UK and the US they made them private projects. It worked out in both circumstances, but there, that's kind of a gray area. But we, we, we generally um, have certain kinds of things like education concentrated in the government, and, uh, but not completely either. So uh, I think we have to experiment and see how things work out well. A, a lot of things that people want to do can't be done by an individual. You can go home and make your dinner, and you want to do that, of course. But many more things are not, can't be done by an individual. Like you want to be healthy, you need a hospital or you want to be entertained, you need a theater. And so these things all require financing of activities. And always, they seem to involve lots of people, and they involve resources that come in, and they involve time. They have to take place over a long interval of time. Making these things happen, and happen consistently, is what finance is all about. Some people mention the uh, government bond bubble in the United States. I'm not sure that that qualifies as a bubble, but it, it might. At least the yields might go up and prices might fall uh, as soon as there's a recovery. Other examples that come to mind are gold. We've seen a huge increase in gold prices that might collapse, so it could be a bubble. Another example is farmland. And this one might have a while to go still. Uh, there's a lot of concern about higher food prices, about droughts in some parts of the world, pushing food prices up. And so that could generate, that could sustain the, the boom we've seen in farmland prices for some time still to come. My book, Finance and the Good Society, was written, was begun after the crisis because I thought that there was so much hostility toward the financial sector that is misplaced. People may be angry about what happens, but we need the financial sector, and we need it in its many different ramifications. So what people really should be doing, if they're motivated by 15M or Occupy Wall Street or any of these movements, they should be motivated to get in and learn finance and to get inside and make it happen better.